Hello everybody, my name is Chris Brady, author of the Boeing 737 Tech Site and the Boeing 737 Tech Guide. And this video is all about doors. So in this uh, video I'll be covering the entry and service doors, the construction, gates, latching, stops, heels, hinges, seals, insulation, heating, the various mechanisms, cautions and drains. Then onto the mid-cabin emergency exit doors, overwing exits, cargo doors, and door warnings. As always, please treat your company training and their manuals as the authoritative source of information. Okay, starting with the entry and service doors. So these are your doors, uh, one and two left and right. Um, quick overview here, uh, as seen from the outside, uh, right at the very top you've got a rain gutter, um, just to just to stop the rain coming in as it uh, as it runs down the um, the crown of the fuselage. Um, next thing labelled there are the upper and lower gates. A little difficult to see the upper gate on this photo, but if you look down uh, at the bottom of the door for the lower gate, you can see the hinge line clearly showing on that. I'll come on to discuss the, the gates and the functions and the mechanisms uh, a little bit later in the video. And uh, Next down you've got the, uh, the hinges and the lock release pin on the upper hinge there. Uh, the window used by cabin crew to, to check outside before, um, before opening the doors and also by ground staff to check that there's no lanyard or, or, or um, uh, sort of tape across it to, to, show the, to indicate whether the door's armed or not. Handle there in the centre, then you've got the lower hinge, lower gate and uh, the sill at the bottom is made of titanium. Uh, it's actually a titanium alloy, um, uh, and you can see I've, I've actually quoted the, uh, the titanium 6 alley 4V. And this, if you care to Google it, uh, it's you can find that it's an alloy with a high specific strength and corrosion resistance. So it's perfect for all the the impact damage that uh, that the door sills might get. Um, not only the, the entry doors but the service doors because obviously you've got things like ambulifts coming up to them um, uh, or, uh, or you know m m manually moved stairs and of course the other place that you've got these sills is on the, the cargo holds where the, uh, where the belt loaders go up to the, um, up to the hold um, so, so quite, quite a necessary piece of strengthening there um, the entry doors, dimensionally they're slightly larger than the service doors, I'm sure you've probably noticed this, the, the, the one, 1 1.83 metres by 86 centimetres compared to 1.63 by 76 centimetres for the service doors. Um, they just give the passengers a bit more room to get in and out than they do the, uh, the, the, the caterers and the, uh, and the ambulifts I guess. And uh, as previously mentioned, a rain gutter above each door. So that's um, that's the site you'll probably see um, on your turnarounds. Th that's the the door in the fully open position there on uh, on an airbridge. Um, all four passenger and service doors are plug type. Um, in fact, most of the uh, most of the doors we'll be covering on on this are plug type. And that means specifically for the passenger and service doors that the left and right sides of the doors are wider than the frame. Um, and you'll see this better in a in in, in a in another photo coming up. That enables the door to push against the frame when the aircraft is pressurized, thereby holding it in place. And uh, th it kind of begs the obvious question, I suppose, how do you, do you manage to open a door outwards which is wider than the than the frame it's sitting in? And um, and the answer is, is by quite an intricate mechanism uh, wh whereby the, the doors the, the the gates at the top and bottom retract first, then the doors move slightly inwards and turn before they can move out to the, the full open position. It's it's one of those things that's actually quite difficult to explain in words. Um, but when you when you've seen it, and I'm sure you know ev the vast majority of you watching this video will will have seen how the the 737 doors open. You you, you then kind of get it, um, but uh, a little bit tricky to explain in words. Um, so let's uh, let's have a look at these uh, these steps. So the the, the gates. Now you, you, 
these are things that you may not have noticed, um, but they're, they're actually pretty essential. Well, they, they are essential to, to, the, to the whole operation of the, of the door. So along the, the, the top and bottom um, le length of the door, uh, you, you've got these gates and w as you open the or turn the handle to open the door these gates fold inwards um, now that reduces the height of the of the door allowing it to, to pass through the frame uh, inwards first to, to turn before you, you push it outwards now not only do they reduce the the height of the door but they also kind of act as pressure locks um, because these gates open into the cabin if the aircraft is still pressurized um, I, if, if, if you're in flight I, I, I guess you, you can't open the door so that's effectively a, a, a pressure lock um, now if the door is just if, if the cabin is just very slightly pressurized uh, you know, if there's a little bit of residual pressure, then you can overcome that. Um, I mean, it's 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 a little tough. Um, the, those of us that flew the um, the old original seven three sevens, well, the originals and the classics, used to have a um, a non-digital pressurization control, and it used to have a flight ground position. And after landing, it was it was part of the FO scan to move that to ground, which, of course, uh, as FOs, we all forgot once or twice. And you get the, you get a call from the cabin when you when you came on stand saying we can't open the doors, and you say all oh, right okay, and you suddenly remember that it's because you've uh, you've forgotten to move the flight ground switch to uh, to ground, but anyway that that that's just a, a little bit of residual pressure and that is is usually overcomable by um by a hefty member of the cabin crew, but once the aircraft's you know in flight and, and there's a, diff, a decent amount of, of of uh, diff pressure on the uh, on on the door, in particular on the gate, you will not be able to open it, uh, which is which is why the doors don't have you know locks on per se. Okay, uh, onto latching, um, and th this is the photo I mentioned a couple of slides ago, which shows the 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 the, the, the width difference or or the or the, um, the the fact that the door is wider than the frame. Uh, in in width, um, but but not actually in height. So as the door is closed by by turning the handle, um, you've got four roller latches on the door, and they fit into these latch tracks on the frame, which are marked in the in the red circles there. Um, the the rollers then then rotate into those latches all the way in to hold the door closed. Now as I say these are latches they're not locks. Um, the, I guess the difference between a latch and a lock is, is, is a latch is just, is just like a kind of it, it, it holds the door in place it, it, it can be opened without a key you know or, or any unlocking mechanism. So a close-up of these um, of these the, these latch tracks and and rollers is is here. So you, you can you see in this photo, I've I've indicated in green the path of the latch roller as the door closes. So it it, it swings around, goes into the latch track, and then you can probably just see on the photo if you look at the latch roller there, it's um, it's on an arm, and there is a a torque tube. The behind that arm that goes the length of the door to the to the other latch roller, and that rotates and that rotates those latch latch rollers into the track. Also, if you look at the the, the track, you'll see at the bottom of this particular one there's a, there's a, a door warning switch there. You see you see there's a little sort of um, nipple at the bottom that the uh, that the roller will will go onto, and when it depresses that, that will then send the the the, the signal to the um, well, the, the the PSEU on the um, on the NGs and the Macs uh, to to say that that door is uh, is is closed. The uh, the other thing that you may see in the door frame on uh, this is on originals and classics only is um, is is this pin down here, um, and this is the Airstairs latch pin. Um, now when the uh, 
when this is engaged, i.e. when the door is closed, this mechanically and electrically prevents the air stair door from being opened in flight. So, um, you know, so it, it's just a fail safe mechanism so you don't get, you know, passengers or, or you know, whoever, uh, you know, attempting to open, you know, f fiddle with switches in flight. Uh, this pin, which as you, you can see because it's buried in the frame here, is, is hidden away from the cabin in, in flight and you will not be able to open the air stairs because of that pin. Um, that can only be retracted by opening the forward entry door uh, or by operating the, the air stair exterior control handle. Um, obviously you may need to, to do that if you come into uh, to a dead aircraft in the morning, you, you may need to open the, the, the air stairs by the exterior control handle. It's assumed nobody will be operating that handle once the aircraft is in flight. Uh, on the NG and the MAX, we don't have this pin. It's all replaced by sensors and um, and the logic for it and control for the air stairs is done through the PSEU. So, uh, so that pin you won't find on an NG or a MAX. Um, looking further up the the, the, the door, you, you you've actually got a um, a couple of door guides or, or, or one pin and one guide track on each uh, each door. It's about halfway up uh, on the non hinge side of the door, and these are to just help the door sit in the correctly aligned position in the, in, within the frame when it's closed. And you know any of you who who've ever you know done any DIY and tried to try to hang a door uh, or try to adjust a door that, that, that that's gone out of um, you know out of true we'll, we'll know what a pain it can be so um, so Boeing have anticipated that and the you know the, the inevitable movement of the, of the of the frame of the door over the years as it takes uh, all the punishment it gets um, and in, in addition to the, the the latch rollers and tracks that you saw a couple of slides ago they've put in these guide pins opposite on the opposite side to the hinges just to help the door sit exactly right um, so that uh, so that all the rest of the mechanism works correctly door stops um, so this is quite a busy photo I just really want to uh, try and convey how many of these there are um, the, there are door stop pins, as, as many pins as there are pressure pads on the on the door, and there are these pressure pads that, that you can see uh, marked on the, on the photo here on the, the door frames. There are actually um, two less on the hinge side because of the space taken up by the uh, by the hinges. A little bit of trivia for you there. So if we just have a closer look at those, uh, the top photo there is the is the pin. Now this is on the door, and the bottom photo is the is the pressure pad, which is on the on the frame. Now when the door is closed um, and the aircraft's unpressurized, there is actually a small gap. Um, we're, we're, we're talking millimeters um, between the pins and the pads, and that's that's normal. Um, the the door closed travel, if you like, that that's controlled by the latch tracks. So it, it it's not like you know the door has to, the, the pins have to slam into the pressure pads to, to to say that's the closed position. That that's done, as I say, with the with the latch tracks. These pins and pads kind of come into their own when the aircraft pressurizes. And what happens then is that the door under the um, under the force of the of the cabin pressure gets pushed outwards outboard and the pins then contact the um, the pressure pads and that transmits the pressure loads of w which are on the door out to the door frame and and disperse it amongst the the, the, the frame and the aircraft structure because um, obviously you can imagine you know uh, you know go back to your physics days the the, the, the amount of pressure force which is on the square area of a door it's enormous it's tons absolutely tons of force so um, so the latch tracks just aren't going to cut it you know there's only four of those but as you saw in the previous photo the, there's you know a couple of dozen of these 
and uh, and as I say, they disperse as 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 evenly as possible the the, the pressure out to the frame and the structure. The hinges, which we we've, we've sort of mentioned already, each door's got two of these just because of the weight of the door, um, and these obviously allow the door to uh, to open and close. But they also support the door when the aircraft's unpressurized and and take that weight, and you know. Obviously, that those of you who have opened or closed one of the aircraft doors will know that there's a considerable weight in there. Um, again, ju ju just to mention that w when the aircraft's pressurised, the, the 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 weight of the door or, or, or the, the door is supported by cabin pressure pushing the door against the the, the stop fittings that that we saw in the previous uh, the previous slide. Uh, the lower photo is really just showing the the hinge lock that holds the door in in the the open position, so that the wind can't you know blow it closed and you know um, injure anybody who, who's, who's on the steps. Um, you push that down that that little yellow lever there, or, or some of the older ones have got a button on on the outside that you push down to release the lock before closing the door. A uh, quick word about seals. These um, often overlooked by, well, particularly by us as as, as aircrew. Uh, th these are vital, really, for for the whole pressurization of the aircraft. Um, the the doors are incredibly well sealed. Um, again, if you think of the of, of the, the the Delta P, uh, you know that that air pressure is 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 trying to escape all the time uh, throughout all the the, the, the circumference of the doors and in fact you know the the, the windows and, and various other areas of the aircraft so so the you know ceiling is is, is a big part of uh, you know the behind the scenes work that goes on to to, to make the aircraft pressurize um, various types of seals are used I've, I've indicated two on here um, the uh, the the main circumference of the door is sealed with a bulb type seal that that's used where there's any uh, any compression between the door and the frame um, which, which compresses that that, that sort of bulb and, and, and makes the seal good um, blade seals are used in other circumstances where, where, where there's no compression going on and you can see uh, the finger there just just holding back that that blade type seal against the um, against the gap in the the, the door hinge video here of uh, of the door seal in in action now with with the seals care should really be taken uh, I, I guess this is probably more addressed to cabin crew but you know also one for us to bear in mind you know if we're doing ferry flights or, or what have you um, and you know we, we of course are not as familiar with with door operation as the cabin crew are um, but care sh should be taken not to accidentally get any foreign objects, now, and by that I really mean lanyards, or I've, I've even seen seatbelt straps closed in in the doors, um, as they can they can damage the seals, um, or impinge on the door jams, latches, switches. You know, you, you've seen now all the mechanism which is in that door frame, um, and it's you know it's all fairly important stuff. Um, if you have ever had the misfortune to take off with anything trapped in one of the door seals and um, with, with, with time it'll happen to you if it hasn't already um, you, you'll know because you'll get a call from the cabin crew saying oh the door's making a, an awful racket and if you've ever gone back and heard one it, they are loud they really are loud um, and uh, you you kind of just have to grin and bear it, really. Um, you, 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 it's unlikely you'll be able to pull anything back through that 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 door seal because the well, it depends how high you are, what what the delta p is again. Um, but you're probably going to have to live with that until you um, until you land. Um, but yeah, it's 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 very loud, um, and that that noise is the air escaping. Um, so that's having an impact on on the on the pressurization and the bleed requirements of of the aircraft, um, and that noise will, you know, we'll 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 often get get louder at high high differential pressures or higher uh, air speeds. Sometimes, uh, oddly enough, it may actually get quieter at high differential pressures as as the seal 
makes over whatever was trapped inside it. All depends on, on what was trapped in and, and, and how it was trapped in. Uh, a quick word about leak checks, uh, since we've been talking about pressurization and door seals. Um, the well, what shall I explain first? The, the picture or the words? Okay, I'll, I'll give you the words. So, so after after a door seal is changed, um, engineers will pressurize the aircraft to, to, to 4 psi de delta P using bleed air from the APU. And, and that is, is what's known as a leak check, which kind of is what it says on the tin. You, you, pressure, you pressurize the aircraft and see if it leaks anywhere, if there are any air leaks. Um, they'll also do this not only after after uh, changing a door seal, but after changing any windows, any work on the outflow valve, or any skin repairs, but particularly on pressure sections. Now, a leak check on the whole aircraft, uh, you know, r rather than just just around a door seal or, or you know around an individual area, uh, can be performed in flight as part of an air test and. Uh, Again, I've I've done hundreds of these, and th which is where that this this photograph is taken from. So what we do is is we go up to um, to to four one zero or three five zero for for the for the classics. Never understood why on the classics we didn't go up to um, up to three three seven zero. Um, or, or, but anyway, for three five zero it was. Um, and what we do is we we switch the packs off. Um, and th that stops the introduction of any more air uh, into the cabin. So it allows any air uh, that, 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 that's in the cabin to, to then um, uh, es escape. Now, obviously the outflow valve will, will, will try and maintain the pressure, so that will close. But uh, once the outflow valve's closed, then if the cabin climbs, it's because of leaks, uh, and and the leaks are you know generally uh, are around seals. So what what uh, what Boeing say for a, for a, for a brand new build aircraft, anything up to two thousand feet a minute rate of climb is acceptable. Um, the on this photograph you can see uh, I I got just over three thousand feet per minute, so that's not acceptable. So there the, there was there was something wrong there with with somewhere in the, in the, in the seals of of the aircraft and uh, this is actually what was wrong the, the, this is the actual component w uh, that the that the engineer found after i reported this um the, the, this failure of the leak check and that i i i forget cuz this was a long time ago that this was maybe 15 years ago um, but that to me lo lo looks like a component on the on the pneumatic side, so between the packs and the and where the air comes into the aircraft. Uh, personally, I'm surprised that such a small rip caused such a a, a very large um, r r rate of climb. Uh, you know, a high a high leak, but but it did, or, or so I was told. Um, now. Sometimes older aircraft can fail this check without any obvious cabin air noise if if their overall condition is poor. So, and and that is a general rule of thumb. The older the aircraft, the the worse the the leak check is going to be, because um, they they start leaking from everywhere. Um, and it's it's not only door seals. As I say, it's, it it can be windows or um, sink plugs is 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 another one. Um, uh, and and of course any any possible you know, uh, structural uh, gaps as well that, that, that there might be. Now, the implications of failing uh, leak check, um, well, well the, there, are, there are several. What well, One is that the, the new components or, or the repair wasn't satisfactory, so, and that's why the leak check is done after, you know, um, w one of these critical components is changed. So the, the engineers will do their leak check. If it fails, they go back and, and recheck their work or the component. Um, the other implication of, of an aircraft firm lead check are that the, the bleed requirements will be higher to maintain pressurization and that has an associated fuel burn penalty because the engines have got to work harder to give the uh, the necessary bleed to keep the cabin pressurized or indeed to pressurize it at all. So there's actually a commercial implication with an aircraft failing a leak check. 
and then the last one which which is the one that you know really strikes home to, to us as pilots is that if a, if a pack or a bleed source were, were, were to fail in flight the remaining pack or, or, or single bleed source may not be able to maintain cabin pressure on its own because you, you've got a leaky aircraft thereby necessitating what could possibly be a, uh, a, a rapid descent so um so it's quite a lot of implications for uh, uh for, for for a failure of a leak check um which is why they they're often done on you know uh end of lease handbacks uh or after uh, maintenance of that nature uh or indeed on a, on a brand new aircraft coming coming straight out the factory from Boeing Uh, okay, changing subject now onto insulation. This photo, if you haven't seen this uh, this kind of thing before, th this is what the door looks like when the uh, when the, in the the lining and the insulation have been removed. So that th this was on heavy maintenance. This was on a on a on a C check. Um, so the doors are covered with uh, an insulation blanket to reduce uh, heat loss and sound transmission. Um, and then there's a lining panel put over the over the front of that, to just basically cosmetic reasons, just just to match the cabin interior. Um, again, you can see the, uh, the the rain gutter over the door there, and the the various door stops, and uh, and you can also on this photo see the the latches at the top and bottom, um, which pivot round into the latch tracks, and in the middle, you can see the uh, the, 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 the 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 guide. The guide pin, which 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 goes into the frame. Even though the doors are insulated, they actually still require extra heating in flight, um, and that's done by uh, using some conditioned cabin air, which is further heated by a, a, a 325 watt heating element, uh, and then ducted internally around the the, the forward and aft door frames. The overwing exits are also heated as well, um, but in a different way that they, they don't use warmer. They've got electrically heated blankets uh, within and below the um, the, the exits, the, the, the exit doors. All of those uh, things can be isolated from a single circuit breaker. That's on the P18-3 panel there, just, just says door area heat control. Not that there's any operational need for, for, for us to do it. I, I, I've really just shown you the photo of a circuit breaker because I I, I don't have a a stock photo of the of of the door heating system, um, so that that's about the best I could do for you. Okay, so um, while we're looking behind the scenes of the of of the door, behind the lining, and behind the uh, the insulation, um, let's let's take a look at the the mechanisms. Um, now, this this uh, is is a little bit tricky again to explain in words, but um, but I've done my best with, um, with 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 some Mickey Mouse graphics on this to, um, to to help explain what happens when you when you move the handle. So, let's start with the latching mechanism. Um, and in fact, before I start that, you see I've used three colours here. Uh, which I hope isn't too confusing. So that my, my color coding is that the the red arrows are are, are labels po pointing to components. Where the components are hidden behind the uh, the the door, you can't see all of the components. Uh, I've I've indicated those in blue, and any movement of any of these components I've shown in yellow. Uh, so let, let's see how this goes. Um, now, when when you open the door, the, the you 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 do it obviously by by rotating the handle. Um, that actually happens in two stages: the door rotation. Uh, the, the the first stage does one set of things, and the second stage does another set of things. It, it, this is all completely invisible to us as crew. We we just turn the handle and the door opens, you know, end of. But if if you're watching this video, you're probably more interested in the mechanics of what goes on and the you know the behind the scenes. So that that's what I'm going to try and explain to you here. So for the first part of the rotation, um, what what you're actually doing there is is you're you're unlatching the door 
which which makes sense you have to unlatch it before you can open it so so the first sort of quarter turn of this handle does that and what happens is there's a cam plate there behind the handle and that moves two push rods the upper lash push rod and the uh, oh I've, I've mislabeled the bottom one that obviously the bottom one should be labeled lower latch push rod so both of those push rods are pulled by the uh, by the cam plate and in doing so they are attached as you can see to uh, an upper latch torque tube and a lower latch torque tube so when they are, 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 are pulled by the cam plate they rotate the torque tubes when they rotate the torque tubes the the latches which are on either end of both torque tubes four latches in in total also rotate and that rotates them out of the latch tracks which you saw in an earlier photo on the door frames so that's that's the first thing that happens the second thing that happens again with this first quarter turn the there are two more push rods attached to the, um, the the latch torque tubes and these push rods are attached to the gates the upper and the lower gates and when the torque tube rotates it pulls the uh, the gate push rods which which pull the uh, the gates themselves uh, open um, and that uh, th then al allows that th that reduces the height of the door which allows it to be turned inside the third thing that happens when you move the the handle all the way around to its full extent what you're then doing is is is, is is something different behind the scenes you're then pulling the cocking crank which you can see there that horizontal bar to to rotate the door torque tube which is the vertical bar that you see just to the the right in this picture of the of the handle and the cam plate that rotates that then causes the the door to to move to the to the cocked open position on its hinges. And remember, the cocked open position is 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 when it's actually in the cabin um, on its hinges. Now, when it's in that cocked open position, once it's got there, you can't turn the handle any further. It, 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 nothing more can happen from that point on. You then have to you know physically push the door open yourself. So turning the handle doesn't open the door all the way. It only opens it to the uh, to, to to the fully cocked position, or, or to the cocked open position. So that's that's the behind the scenes mechanics of of what goes on when 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 you turn the door handle. So say so the, the, the to recap that the, the first two things which happen and these happen simultaneously are that the, the the door is unlatched and the and the gates open once that happens then the rest of the travel of the handle actually opens the door or opens it to the cock position from there you then push it all the way open um a caution uh the, 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 now this is not an afm limitation the, 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 this is just a caution um do not operate the entry or service doors with winds uh, at, at the, do the door and that's an important little caveat winds at the door of more than 40 knots don't keep the entry or service doors open when wind gusts are more than 65 knots strong winds can cause damage to the structure of the aircraft yes well uh, they can now the, the reason why I draw your attention to the to, to this caveat with winds at the door of more than 40 knots that is not the same as a wind check from the airfield it may be but it may not be remember that that your your aircraft is, uh, well remember where the location of the windsock is you know it, it it it's stuck out on the airfield near the runway that's usually in quite an exposed location if you as the as the captain are happy that where you are the wind speed is less than 40 knots then you can legitimately operate the door um, now the the place where where this actually comes into play more frequently than others, uh, certainly for me on my route network, is is Keflavik in in Iceland, and they know this limitation. 
and they know that if uh, if you've landed in a in a howling wind like they they often have in that part of the world um and you 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 taxi up to the terminal and they they're giving wind checks of 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 50 something knots which I have had in Keflavik many a time. Um, then you can't get your passengers off, and then you know the airport kind of grinds to a halt. So what they do at Kef is they park you uh, sort of round the back in a, in a, in a kind of a, in, in a sheltered place on on the um, on the terminal uh, where you're you're sort of in a in a corner and, and sheltered on two sides from the winds, um, and the, and they will use. The, the, there are two of these places, uh, and they will use whichever one depending on the prevailing wind direction. So, um, so don't think if the wind check is 40 knots from the airfield that you necessarily cannot use the doors. Um, you have a think about where you are and where you're parked and what the actual local wind is at the door, and you you may find that you can use them. But I say that that's that's your call on the day. Um, I think this is the last thing I've got to say about the main <laughs> entry doors. <laughs> Who knew there was so much about them? Um, and and this this is the drains. Um, I mean, I've, I've I've already mentioned several times that there is a gutter over the door. But nevertheless, when the doors open, uh, rain can still get in and on the door. Now. The 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 doors have got these in, internal drain paths, where, where, so so the the water actually flows, well preferably around the door, um, but it can flow, it can end up inside it as well. Um, now when this when the door is closed, the, um, the 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 water will still continue to run around the outside of the door within the frame, and it will end up here at the bottom of the um, uh, at the bottom of the threshold, and you can see in this photo that, that this one was well and truly flooded. Um, and in fact, the reason why I took the photo was because it stayed flooded. The water didn't go down those those two drains that that you see I've marked um, at the ends of the red red arrows there. Um, what should happen is that the water should just flow down those those two drains that that you see at either side of the uh, of the door sill. And go down to to either a a, a bladder or, or or a float drain valve, and then drain away. Uh, you know, it it the the water will come out of this little hexagonal shaped hole that that you can that you can see on the underside of the aircraft. So uh, so there you go. For, for those of you who are following these videos, like you, you you'll know I I keep saying, well, there, there's something else that you can check on your walk around. Well, here's something else as well. So your your next challenge, if if you're up for it, guys, is to uh, is to when you do your next walk around, see if you can locate these these drain holes. They're, they're very small. They're 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 only uh, a centimeter or so in diameter. The whole thing, and the hexagonal hole is 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 probably about I don't know five or six mil from memory. Um, but that on the ground, you may see water dripping out of that, uh, particularly on a rainy day. Uh, or if there's been any water spilt up there at the door sill, that's okay. But the um, but the bladder or float drain valve will will uh, will close when the aircraft is pressurised. So you th there won't be any water draining out of that in flight because th they want to avoid it blocking with ice. Anyway, more of all that in uh, in a forthcoming water and waste video, which I will get round to in uh, in due course. All right, onto the um, onto the next lot of doors. These are the the mid cabin emergency exit doors. Um, I guess not many of you will have these fitted. Um, you will find these on the 900ER, on the uh, the Max 8200, and the Max 9 and the Max 10 when that comes out. Uh, these are uh, Type 2 uh, emergency exits. Um, and for those of you unfamiliar with what a Type 2 is, I've given you the uh, the definition there from uh, from FAR 25807. Rectangular opening, uh, not less than 20 inches wide, 44 inches high, and it, it goes on to define the the, the corner radii um, and the the step up or the, or the the maximum step up 
um, or, or step down. So it, it's quite tightly defined what a type 2 exit is and uh, basically what it is is it, it's an exit which can let more people through in a given time than the, the overwing exit. Uh, it stands to reason because it's bigger so it's just easier to get out of. Um, and with the increased passenger capacity of the uh, of, of those aircraft types I've mentioned, um, this door was necessary. Um, these doors actually open outwards and hinge down, um, so they don't need gates to reduce their size because they're, they're opening outwards. Um, but they must actually move upwards first, ju just by a few inches, uh, in fact, a couple of inches, I think, uh, just to clear the stop fittings before they fold down. Any residual air pressure is le released through uh, a vent door or pressure relief door, depending on what you want to call it, which I've shown there, uh, just above the porthole, um, when the inside or the outside handle is pulled. Yes, there is an outside handle, and I, for one, would not like to be the guy who's ever having to pull that. Um, as you'll see from the next slide, what happens is it opens out onto you if you if you're pulling that slide that handle from the outside. So um, here we go. Th these are a few stills taken from a, a, a video which is doing the rounds on um, on on YouTube somewhere. Um, first thing to point out is those white patches beneath the door. That's just padding for this um, put in place just for this test. Uh, so the door doesn't crash down and, and damage the fuselage. Um, so what happens is the, uh, the, the 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 first picture up there in the top left that's before anything's happened. The second picture at the top right you can see that the uh, the the vent doors opened the so the handle must have been pulled on on the inside obviously. Um, then the next thing that happens is well certainly on the inside when you've moved that handle to the fully open position the door actually stays. Uh, cocked open uh, and so again pulling the handle does not open the door as in it doesn't open it all the way it, it just unlocks it so what you got to do is you got to move the handle fully open and then push it open yourself and uh, and the next three pictures shows you what happens when you push it open uh, the the door falls open the, the slide comes out um, and interestingly, uh, the slide actually deploys slightly, or pointing slightly aft, and uh, th this is to to deconflict with um, with folk who might be coming down the overwing exit, um, just to, so it doesn't impede their their progress away from the aircraft. Uh, overwing exits, then, as we've just mentioned them. Um, this is what they look like from the inside. I'm sure you're all familiar with that view. Uh, these are type 3 emergency exits. Um, and again, the definition it is there, not less than 20 by 36 inches in, uh, in size. And again, there are, there are limitations on the, the step up. It, the inside step up can't be more than 20 inches. And if it's located over a wing, as ours are on the 737, the step down outside the aircraft can't exceed 27 inches. And uh, indeed, it doesn't. On the originals and classics, the overwing exit was different. Um, it was a lot more tricky to use um, because what happened, you, you basically did need two hands to operate it. Um, and I remember on you know the annual SEP drills that we the, that we have to do, um, the the confusion about you know wh which hand did you put on the was it left hand on top or right hand on top and you know is it is it palms inwards or palms outwards or all all the rest of it, um, so it was a bit tricky, um, and what happens for, for those of you who remember is that the door opened and then it just fell inside the cabin, uh, leaving this you know huge obstacle for the passengers to uh, to climb over as they uh, as they were trying to get out of the um, the burning aircraft um, so the guidance was that, that you 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 held it as you opened it turned it on its side and threw it out and uh, that way it wouldn't be you know in anybody's way anyway 
unfortunately, Boeing came up with a much better solution for the NG, and uh, and and this this is what we got on the Max as well. Um, so it's an ergonomically improved version of the uh, of the Type Three, as a, as I've written there, and th this <coughs> opens automatically when the handle is pulled and uh, and hinges upwards, as you can see in the photo. And if you um, if you read what Boeing have written about it, uh, which are written there in in in, in italics, uh, they they're they're quite pleased with this tool, and to be honest, rightly so. It's a, it's such an improvement on the old design. Um, so what they've written is that the handle was uh, was redesigned and tested to ensure that anyone could operate the door using either single or double hand grips. Then approximately 200 people who were unfamiliar with the design and who had never operated an overwing exit participated in tests to verify that the average adult can operate the exit in an emergency. The exit test revealed a significantly improved capability to evacuate the airplane. Well, great. Um, I mean, it, it's just so much better. It's, it's, it's a one-handed opener, and it opens a way out of the way. It just, just doesn't, you know, get in the way at all. It's, you know, very much fire and forget. Um, when that handle's pulled, any residual air pressure is released through the vent door, just the same as on the um, on the mid exit door, and indeed, you know, on the on the on the main cabin doors as well, with the um, with the, uh, uh, the, the those sort of gates at the top and bottom. It, it's all the same thing. It's it's just to re re release any residual air pressure. I say you won't be able to open these with with the with the cabin properly pressurized. You just won't be strong enough to overcome the air pressure. Um, but if we're just talking a very very small delta p, uh, where, when you're on the ground, then then yes you can. Um, and as written there, a greater a greater differential pressure effectively prevents the handle from being pulled. Uh, in, in flight or, or when the aircraft's pressurized. Now pulling the handle also rotates the uh, the lock torque tube which I've shown there, I've, I've, I've marked on with uh, with one of the red arrows there and uh, next to it's a torsion spring which, which spring loads the, uh, the, the, the handle back. Um, keep that lock torque tube in mind um, as I show you the this next slide. Um, pulling the handle rotates that torque tube and that rotates the lock rollers which you can see on the the right hand photo there on the on the door itself you can see the torque tube and um, and then there's an arm to it to a lock roller and what are my yellow movement arrows there showing how that that rotates and on the photo on the left, that shows you the lock receiver. So, so that's the mechanism for getting the the the, the lock out of the uh, out of the receiver, is 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 with that torque tube, which is what you pull when you move the handle, which is part of what makes that handle a, a, a little bit stiff to operate. Um, the the door will then move very slightly inwards and down just to clear the stop fittings and then it will open up um, and, and out of the way. Um, there's a, a lock crank and a lock pull. Um, the, these are actually on opposite sides of the door. Um, and they work together to stabilize the door when it's in the uh, when it's in the open position. Again, it's one of those things. It, it's very very difficult to to, to explain in, in words. If if I had a diagram or, or 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 a photo of this, you know, the door stripped away, I would show it you and you would get it. But I think for the level of information we need, that that this is probably this is probably sufficient. Um, also worth bearing in mind, there's a counterbalance uh, in in the door, which which both opens the door uh, for us and keeps the door in the in the open position. Um, so it's uh, it it it's actually a really really well designed door. I'm uh, a big fan of it. Flight lock. So those of you who've seen the PSEU video may recall uh, the, this slide. Uh, those of you who haven't, I will uh, I'll direct you to. To maybe watch the the PSEU video after you've seen this one. Um, so the overwing exit and the mid exit doors have got flight locks in them, uh, and they activate uh, when the thrust levers are, uh, are beyond 53 degrees on the takeoff roll to prevent them from being opened in flight. So it's not purely done by air pressure, uh, a, a pressure lock. It you've actually got solenoid held plungers, uh, metal plungers, and they go in into the torque tube 
the, the, the lock torque tube which I showed you a couple of slides ago and they hold that in the lock position. Um, those those plungers are controlled by the PSEU for the overwing exits and the, the supplementary PSEU for the, for the mid exit doors. The flight lock solenoids, they are DC powered to the lock position. So if, uh, if, if your DC power is lost, the locks will release. So you won't be trapped inside the aircraft. And there's a tension spring that also pulls the, the, the flight lock pull to the, to the unlock position. So it's all fail safe. Um, fail safe, but like any system, it, it can develop faults. And uh, if it fails, if the flight locks fail to engage when the thrust leaves are advanced for takeoff, the associated door light will uh, will illuminate. And um, I, again, as I mentioned on the PSEU video, th th this was quite an early problem with the with the NGs. Um, it wasn't uncommon at all to get one of the the overwing. Uh, door lights illuminate at the start of the takeoff run. If uh, if a flight lock has, has failed locked uh, or a fault is detected, the PSEU or SPSEU light illuminates. Now, <laughs> when I say illuminate, it'll illuminate, um, but it won't illuminate in flight because it's inhibited in flight. So it, if, it, if this problem occurs in flight, the first you will know about it is after landing, 30 seconds after landing, then you you get the the PSEU or the SPSEU light, and that's probably what's happened. Okay, cargo doors. Um, these are actually surprisingly similar in, in 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 design and mechanism to the cabin doors. I mean, yeah, they're a different shape, but but really they they they, they function quite similarly. Um, they don't have gates because they they open inwards. Um, so, so, so they have that in, as as, diff as a difference. So, so the opening is is actually um, m much more simplified. Um, but again, they, they've they you know they've they've got a big round handle with a cam on the back that that, that you know moves um, moves various torque tubes and. Um, You've got centering rollers there, which you can see uh, I've, I've labelled up on the photo in the door frame to align the door between the pads as the as the door closes. Again, this this, this aligns the stop fittings between the door and the frame, keeps the door uh, square in the frame. Um, there's also a handle on the inside. <laughs> uh, I, I guess this is put there just for safety in case a uh, a baggage handler. Uh, finds himself trapped inside, um, either accidentally or if the guys outside are playing a practical joke on him. Um, there is a handle on the inside, so you can you you, you can get out if if you need to. Um, you can just about see uh, I've labelled up um, a latch access panel there. They're they're, um, they're oval shaped panels, and you'll see these on the outside. Again, not a little um, bit of homework. <laughs> Uh, next time you're doing your walk around, <coughs> look out for these two oval shaped panels on the cargo doors. They, uh, they're just access panels for the engineers um, to, to access the, um, the, 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 the torque tubes for the, for the latches. Um, you know, they, they, they don't open on, unless you've got a screwdriver in your pocket. Um, but they show you where they are. So if, if, you, if you look at this picture, you can see that they are running a alongside uh, the path of the of the rollers so because the torque tube is behind there again on the photo you can see uh, there's the uh, door stop pins uh, obviously less than on a big you know passenger door um, the lateral you can see the access panel you can see and the um, and the bungee, bungee lanyard uh, which you can see better on this photograph with the handle um, so the cargo doors um they've got a counterbalance to, to that makes them feel lighter to open um so when you open the handle the the, the door will take very very little effort to push open there's an uplock detent on the uh on the counterbalance cam track and that holds the door open for you so uh so you don't have to worry about it falling back down on you um now when the door is held open that's out of reach of uh, most n normal heighted people um, 
particularly on the NG, which stands that little bit, um, and, and the Max, we, we, which stand quite a bit taller off the ground than the than the Classic. So what you've got is this handle here on the on the on the bungee. So you, if you pull that handle, what it does is it pulls the door down to you. Uh, it, you can't pull it all the way closed, uh, but you can pull it far enough that you can grab the door handle, and then you let go of the uh, of of the lanyard handle and and close the finish closing the door with the with the main door handle. Give it a turn and close it, and and there you go, job done. Um, the other things I've I've got uh, labelled up on this photo: uh, the centering roller, which obviously you saw where, where, where that fits on the previous photo. Lack track, lack track and switch, exactly the same as on the on the passenger uh, doors and the service doors. Um, and, and again, that particular one's got got the switch on it for the for the the cargo door warning light in the flight deck. Um, and there's a light switch there. Uh, for the for the baggage handlers to to have have light while they um, while they do their work. Okay, so this is the operation of the cargo door. I simply go up to it, pull the handle out, give it a turn, and a light push, and the door will open up quite easily due to the the counterbalance system. Have a look around. Uh, there's a light switch there on the right hand side. And again, up on the right-hand side, you'll find the the lanyard with the with the handle on it. Just hold the handle, ideally with your right hand. I was holding the camera in the right hand for this. Pull that down until you can reach the door handle. When you've got that, you can pull the door down fully and lock it. Okay, so on to on to door warnings. Um, so let's have a look at the the difference in door warnings over the the generations. Um, the that photo down there, bottom right, that's the the, the door warning panel on a on a two hundred, very early two hundred. I think it was about line number one forty five. Um, and the main difference between that and all the other generations was the tire screen caption. Um, so I put a photo there that that I took of the of the tire screen on a on a two hundred. Um, and the, 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 this, well, it does what it says on the tin. It's a tire screen. It, it's just a tire burst protector to to stop. You know, if the tires burst, it, it doing any kind of secondary damage w within the wheel well. Um, the, the, these were the, these were soon binned and um, weren't, weren't there on the from the classics onwards. There, there are actually two tire screen doors, uh, left and right ones, but they they share the same warning light. So if if either one becomes latched, you'll get the tire screen caption come on. Um, I guess the only other thing to point out on this particular panel is the uh, the main cargo uh, light, just below the tire screen light. Um, now this was only fitted to cargo. 737 200s, um, those were the side cargo door. And uh, to the best of my knowledge, no cargo 737s since the 200 have got this light. And I've I've seen dozens of, of cargo 300s, 400s, NGs, and I haven't seen a main cargo door light on those. If, if anyone knows of one, let me know. Um, the the, the the reason is as 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 far as I understand it is because um all of the cargo aircraft uh on, on the later generations were all conversions, all done by um third party uh, STC supplemental type certificate holders. Um so they've put their own um uh cargo door warnings on you know, usually on the aft overhead panel um for the crew to see. Um, and, and the panel's usually more sophisticated, I mean, not always that much more sophisticated than just this single light. Um, but again, I, I will do a, a cargo conversion uh, video um, over, over the coming months, and I will, I will show you all these combinations. Um, but as I say, as far as I'm aware, and, and please do let me know if you know any, anything different, the, the main cargo caption only appears on the on the 200 
With classics, the, the situation was a whole lot more straightforward. Uh, the only difference was whether you had airstairs or not. Um, and that's it. The, the 3, the 4, the 500s and all cargo versions thereof all had the same door warning panel which are these basic eight lights or seven lights if you didn't have um, air stairs. For the NG and the Max it all got a little bit more complicated um, with the introduction of overwing exit uh, enunciators. Uh, so they were put in between the, the, the forward and aft entry and service door lights. The um, there's actually no difference between the panels of an NG and a Max. Uh, the, 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 the panels are the same, or at least it's the same combination of lights depending what, what, what doors you have on your aircraft. Now I've labelled these up um, on, on the right there in white uh, just for the NGs. Now that, that's purely because I couldn't fit in all the, all the extra Max combinations. Um, but the, the top caption, or the top photo, uh, is a six or seven hundred with with air stairs. Um, the Max now there was no or is no isn't going to be a, a Max six, but there is a Max seven. But the Max seven actually has two overwing exits on each side. Um, so the, <laughs> the 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 top photo you will not find that combination on a Max. Um, the some BBJ twos, uh, which are 800 converted BBJs, only have a single overwing exit. Um, but as I say, the Max Seven has got two on each side. the The bottom photo there is has got the the mid exit lights, and that, as I've already said, was the 900 ER, the 8200, the, the Max Nine, and and Ten, uh, which have got those. So um, that's that's where you find out what uh, what what kit you've got if you haven't been sufficiently observant on your walk around. Door warnings and flight locks. Let's uh, let's cover those. Um, I got a couple of questions in after the the PSEU video um, from viewers who said, "Well, <laughs> that fascinating, but but what was there before the PSEU?" Um, and realised I didn't actually cover it. I, I I guess the reason for the oversight was because if 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 it wasn't if it wasn't before the PSE, anything before the PSEU is 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 therefore not part of a PSEU video. But anyway, here it is. It's the uh, the miscellaneous solid state switch unit, um, or the miscellaneous switching unit. This is the forerunner of the PSEU. This is what the originals and the classics had, and you find this in the um, in the E&E bay, and that gets all kinds of uh, all the signals from the door sensors, uh, and it controls the enunciator lights. Um, there you go. That's that's what that does. Uh, crank it forward a couple of generations, and on the on the NG and the Max, it's like this. Uh, so the, the all the door warning lights uh, are triggered by switches and door locks. Circuits for the door lights in, are in the PSU or the SPSU for the mid cabin exit doors. Um, if a door is unlatched, the sensor will detect this and signal the PSU. The PSEU then sends a signal to the uh, to the door warning light in the in the overhead panel in the flight deck. So that's that's how that works. The only change to this on the on the NGs and the on the Max, and and this is quite a recent change. That this this came in, uh, I think, about three, four, maybe five years ago. Was there was a second switch or an optional second switch on door one left, on the on the on the main passenger entry door, um, so you can tell um, if if you've got a nice shiny new seven three seven by by counting the number of of uh, of, of of forward entry door switches. Um, I I don't think it's standard. I think it's an it's an option, uh, although it may be standard on the Maxes. I'm I'm not sure. Um, now, the reason for this, the the introduction for this, was because uh, Boeing were getting a lot of reports. Um, I say a lot. I mean, I can't quantify it. I I, I don't think it was you know 
that widespread but it, it, it must have been enough to bring this mod in um, but the reports were that the, that aircraft were, ret were were having to return um, after getting airborne due to air leaks from from door one left um, and the aircraft wasn't pressurizing after takeoff but the door warning light remained extinguished so there, there was no warning that that your aircraft wouldn't pressurize uh, until it didn't pressurize. Now with this modification what happens is both switches must sense the door to be closed for the door, door warning light to extinguish and that reduces the possibility of a false closed indication and Boeing say that, that this has been a tremendous success and there's been you know hardly any uh, returns due to um, due to pressurization problems from door one left. I assume that this wasn't an issue on any of the other three doors um, and I don't know why it was a, a particular problem on door one left. Um, I guess that one probably gets opened and closed more than the others statistically um, but I wouldn't have thought it was a whole lot more. Um, but anyway there you go. Uh, so if, if you've got a, um, a new 737 um, then again next time you're on a turnaround have a look for that second that second entry uh, door switch that's it from me that's uh, pretty much extinguished my knowledge of doors on the 737 as always if you've enjoyed this video give it a like leave a, a nice comment subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and uh, and share it tell your colleagues uh, get them in on the act as well all right thanks very much for listening